first story. OP ran away from the house after her narcissistic mom used her as a full-time living nanny for her baby and abused her constantly. IF16 graduated high school in June. Yes, I graduated early. My mom is currently eight months pregnant, and she just had my half-baby brother Ben in October 2021, so he's almost two. My full-blooded brother Samum14 was with our dad, who lives eight hours away all summer, and just got back two days ago. My stepfather works, so for most of the day, it is just me, my mom, and Ben. I am with Ben in the morning for two hours. During this time, I feed him breakfast, change his diaper, and play with him. I also make my mom coffee and breakfast. My mom sleeps during this time. She wakes up around 9.30 and eats breakfast. Around 10, I walk my dog. When I got back, I put Ben to sleep. My mom plays on her PC during this time. When Ben wakes up, I make his lunch, and she feeds him. Then, I have to take him outside to walk him. Then, I have to take him to water the plants. I have to fetch whatever my mom needs since she can't go up and down the stairs. On top of all this, I had two online classes I was taking. I also had a sick dog I was taking care of. With Sam gone, most of the housework fell on me. It's a lot to handle. I never complained about any of it. I don't know if it's the pregnancy, but my mom has been extremely mean. It only takes her five minutes after seeing me to start complaining about something I didn't do or did wrong. She constantly calls me lazy and compares me to kids my age who have driver's licenses or jobs. These are things I want, but I literally do not have the time to do them because of all my jobs at home. This summer, I wanted to go see my brother and dad just for a week because I missed them. My mom said no because I had to take care of my dog. Fair, I guess. I used to go downtown to the library, and she said I couldn't go anymore because I didn't do insert chore, or she needed someone to help with Ben, right? I wanted to take myself to the movies. No, I want to go to the fair with my brother Sam. No, yesterday was college orientation. Not only did she text me while I was there complaining about me, not telling her we ran out of dishwasher pods, but when I got home, she ranted at me for 20 minutes about how I always ditch my responsibilities. The school starts tomorrow, and I'm so exhausted and sad. I wanted this to be a fun summer. After yelling at me and then telling me to go buy dishwasher pods last night, my mom made me tell her what was making me so upset. I told her I wasn't ready to share it, but she threatened to take away my computer which I paid for and also needed for college, so I did. I told her I was tired of doing everything for her, that I felt underappreciated, and that she and Ben ruined my summer. She said, she was more than capable of taking care of Ben on her own and sent me to bed. It's the next day, and she won't talk to me. She also won't let me help with Ben. I am a little relieved because it's been a long time since I've had time to myself. But I also feel sort of bad. Ada relevant comments. Who is the mom here? My baby brother calls me mom now, so honestly, maybe I am the mother. Can you go live with your dad? I've never lived with him before since she has full custody, but he said I'm always welcome. Living with my dad probably won't be an option because of how far he lives. I've also mentioned it before, and she shot it down immediately. OP is voted NTA. Update. Next day. Hi, so first I want to say thank you so much for all of the attention and support I've gotten. It feels so good to have people say good things about me for once. Basically, I'm a 16-year-old high school graduate, and my pregnant mother is putting a lot of household responsibilities, including taking care of my 22-month-old brother on me. After reading your comments, I've realized a lot. I always knew my mom was a little verbally abusive, but you guys helped me see how bad it actually is. I am not supposed to have these many responsibilities at my age, and my mom is trying to make me feel otherwise by manipulating me. Her mother is a narcissist worse than my own mom, if you can imagine, and extremely manipulative. Her father has a DD and BPD, so I know for a fact that she has inherited some of this behavior from them. Per your suggestions, I have decided to look into emancipation. In the meantime, I will get my things in order to be able to back myself up. I am looking for a job through my college, and I am going to study to get my permit. If I'm able to get my permit this month, I can have my license by February. I agree that I do need to get out of the house ASAP, but it will most likely be after the new baby is born, unfortunately. I am also deciding where I should live. I'm leaning toward my grandfather because he lives on the other side of the country, and he is at least extremely supportive of me and won't expect me to be his slave. A lot of you wanted me to move in with my father, but I'm sorry to say he's not the savior you guys want him to be. He and my mother divorced when I was five, but we've never all been a family. I would see him maybe a few times a month, and now we speak once a month, if that. He is by no means my dad, 
Just a friend I check in with monthly who happened to get my mom pregnant. Here's what's happened since I posted. My mom kicked me out of my bathroom and is now making me share it with my brother because, apparently, I am not able to keep it clean. Mind you, everyone uses this bathroom and she constantly tells me that it's not just my bathroom but of course I am the only one responsible for cleaning it. She has found a way to control my devices through some app that uses Wi-Fi to do so. I've gotten three 15-minute rants about how irresponsible I am. I will no longer fight her and just stick to my plan of getting out ASAP. I have switched all my college classes to online as well. So I can get up and leave when the time comes. I am done. Thank you guys so much for the support. Hopefully, when you hear from me again, I'll be out of this house. I want to be a lawyer. I know I can do it. Who knew I could get so much support from Reddit? Update. One week from the last post. So, I have some good news I guess. I am free to go. My mom got pissed at me today because I was taking care of my dog and my baby brother at the same time. And I forgot to fully clean up after my dog. I've been really stressed lately, and I guess it just slipped my mind to go back to clean up because I was with my baby brother. And then I took him to his bed to sleep. And I went to my computer to start schoolwork. Anyway, I was unloading the dishwasher about an hour later. And she saw that my dog's toys were where I left them and got really mad at me. So I cleaned up and found her in my room. She then complained about how there was a cup in my room. Nothing but water is allowed in bedrooms. I had water in the cup, and also that my baby brother's food pouch was under my bed. I didn't know his pouch was there, but he often goes into my room while I'm not in there, so that must be why it was in there. She kicks me out of my room and tells me that I can only keep what can fit in my luggage and everything else of mine she will give away. So now that I don't have a room, I sleep in the living room on an air mattress. I tried to call my grandmother to ask if I could stay with her for a while, but she didn't answer. About 10 minutes later, she asked me what was wrong with me, and I let it all out. Not like last time though. I told her that she was specifically the reason for all of my stress, and that she made me feel bad about myself. She actually apologized, gave me a hug, and said it was because she's pregnant. She asked why I called my grandmother, they're not on good terms right now, and I told her that I wanted to move out and take my dog with me of course. She was fine with it. Like, a little too fine. She didn't even ask why I wanted to go. She didn't even say she needed to talk it over with my stepfather. She just said I could go. I'm very happy, but a little conflicted. I know I need to go, but I keep thinking about my brothers. How much she'll struggle with two babies by herself. She actually seemed like she felt bad when I told her how the way she was acting made me feel. I will go. I know it's the right choice, regardless of my doubts. I'm going to my grandmother's now because she lives in the same city as my dad eight hours away, a big city, and it's easier. Meanwhile, I'll get a job and talk to my grandfather about moving in with him. I think he will be open to it. He always wants me to visit, and he's extremely supportive. I know it's not the biggest update, but I feel like getting her permission to go was the part I was most afraid of, and I have it, so I wanted to share. Update. I'm leaving. Hi. I just got into a huge fight with my parents, but I'm leaving in two days. I'm so excited. I'm crying right now sort of tears of joy and sadness, but I'm so happy. I have all my documents, and I'm packing up my room right now. I just told the both of them that I'm leaving, and my mother tried to tell me that I'm the only person who sees this household as toxic, and that I'm the real manipulator of the situation. I'm not sure who I'd be manipulating, but okay lol. I told them that I'm moving in with my grandmother temporary. I didn't tell them about me moving to my grandfather's soon and she is trying to fight me and make me live with my father instead. This would be fine, but she legally doesn't get a say in what you guys have told me since I'm old enough to decide where I want to live. I will update one last time once I'm actually out of the house and settled. Updates, not related to this story, but talked about her mom in our confession. I stole the ring my mom inherited from her dead grandfather. My mom has told me stories of her grandfather my entire life. Her father wasn't really present, so her grandfather took the title of dad. She says that he was her best friend. When I was about eight, I went snooping into her room and found this beautiful ring. It had a beautiful red stone and sparkly diamonds on the band. I thought it was pretty, so I took it. I brought it with me to school the next day and gave it to my best friend at the time because she had given me the fruit punch from her lunch the day before. When I got home from school, my mom was screaming and crying, asking where her ring went. I blamed my brother. The plan was to ask my friend to bring the ring back sneak it somewhere into my mom's room, and pretend I found it. My friend never brought the ring back to me. Update on Rad Missy for teens. My mom won't let me eat. Is this normal? Okay, so basically, my mom is really mean sometimes, and when she gets mad, 
She'll punish us my brother is 15, and I'm 17 BTW, and I have two younger brothers, but not from the same dad. Last night, I didn't wipe off the counters in the kitchen, because I came home from work at 10 p.m., and still had homework I'm in college. Now she's not letting me eat for five days. If I even walk into the kitchen, she has threatened to physically harm me. Is this normal? She's been doing weird stuff like this my whole life, and I'm just wondering if anyone else's parents are like this. I wouldn't call it abuse. I feel like that word may be too strong, because even though she has physically harmed me a lot with things that aren't normally used to punish a child, she mostly gets to me mentally and emotionally, and I'm not sure what to call that. She also keeps threatening to kick me out when I turn 18, but keeps taking my money. This week alone, I've given her $200 because she keeps finding reasons why I owe her money. My stepdad is a piece of SHT who just does whatever she says. Any advice or something? Second story. Entitled Bill thinks he is entitled to OP's money and demands she can't gift her husband using her money because he has six children and he needs it more. He then went on to insult OP's husband for making less money, so she cut ties with him. Ignore any grammar or spelling mistakes. I'm using a phone, and autocorrect is exhausting. My 38F younger sister 35F and her husband 36M have six kids. They don't have high-paying jobs and can barely afford to go by a month. I always give them part of my income every month. I'm not on good terms with my bill. Sometimes he is rude, and I don't like to be around him. Recently, I got married to my wonderful husband, Danny 36, after four years of dating. He is an amazing guy. We had a beautiful baby boy six months old. Danny didn't receive a good education. He didn't have a degree and couldn't go to high school. He worked as a truck driver, and now he is a janitor at a middle school. He doesn't like people paying for him daily. Two years into our relationship, he was still using his bicycle and said that it was just like a car. I bought him a car as a wedding gift. He was so happy. His smile and hug brought me unimaginable joy. Recently, Danny wanted to buy a laptop. His birthday was soon, so I decided to buy him that laptop as a gift. So, I had to use part of the money I kept for my sister. I invited my sister and her kids to dinner. I haven't seen her this week. I visit every week. Bill came as well. I always try to avoid Bill, but we can manage to eat dinner without fighting. I told my sister that for the next month, I'll only be giving her $1,000 because I'll be using the rest for us. She didn't like that, but she was fine with it. Bill wasn't fine at all. He thinks I am wrong for not giving them money when they desperately need it, and instead using it for unnecessary stuff. He went as far as giving his opinion and advice, aka insulting my husband, and saying that it's sad that all I can afford is to marry a garbage man who was a truck driver saying, imagine the kind of language he'd be using, and other very insulting things. Ironically, my husband is way more civilized than Bill, is respectful, open-minded, smart, kind, generous, humble, and doesn't have an ounce of entitlement. Everything that Bill lacks. Side note, he is really handsome. I got mad and made fun of him for being poor, and said that I'd pray for them to survive a month with their half-dozen kids without my leftovers. Why I might be the ah. Their kids were around and heard what I said. It might look as if I was bragging or shaming my sister. Finally, doing the thing that made me mad at Bill for doing. Why I might not be the ah. Because I was defending my husband, who wasn't around to defend himself against all these insulting comments that came out of my ridiculously entitled Bill. Ada? Was I a hypocrite? Comments. Shichimi 88. NTA. At this rate, I would just cut off the funding. You have your own family to think about. Your sister and Bill should have financially planned for six kids without your help or money. OP. To be fair, I wasn't always the one helping them out. Back when they just had three kids, our parents were the ones helping her. After they passed away, I started doing that instead. Shawzi. Why on earth did they have three more kids if they couldn't afford the first three? Also, NTA. Backlash Lara. It seems like a one-off. Too bad the kids had to hear that. But my guess is those kids hear your Bill Trash talk you and your husband all the time. Imho, no foul on your part. Keep enjoying life with your husband. OP. To be honest, he tends to be rude at times and says things. But I don't remember him insulting my husband, specifically as a person, this way before. I expected him to trash talk us, but wasn't sure until my niece said something her dad said about our wedding ring. Update by husband on the same account. Four weeks later. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. We made this post a while ago. We were both reading the comments. We took your advice and decided to slowly cut the allowance since kids are involved. 
from 2000 to 1500 to 1000 etc. We couldn't bring ourselves to cut it off at once. My wife called my sister, who unexpectedly brought her husband Oliver. We started talking, and we told them that we should save and take care of ourselves and our future, along with our son's future. We told them our plan to cut the allowance, and we told them that other resources are available for people who need them. Oliver got mad and said that they have kids too, and they need the money to live an acceptable childhood. I told them to try again and find second jobs, even if they thought it was tiring, and that they should work for their family as parents. Oliver said that they weren't talking to me and to not interfere, since it wasn't my money. Fighting Oliver is exhausting and a waste of time. He isn't a civilized guy. My wife isn't good at ignoring it. She got mad and asked him to shut up, saying that their family isn't our responsibility. They started fighting, and it got heated. He can't insult her, money-wise, and isn't great at pointing at anything other than money and me of course. It didn't end the way we planned. Due to his insults, we told them we changed our minds and decided to cut it all at once. Oliver started apologizing, but not to me. My wife pointed that out, and since she isn't the person who could accept that apology, she would ask them to leave. Sil said, We know her husband doesn't mean what he says, and that we are focusing on his words too much, and that if we are okay with their kids having a hard time, then so be it. Before going after her husband, Sil used her last card their parents, which broke her heart. She tried contacting her numerous times, but Sil isn't picking up or responding to the texts. We don't plan on backing up our decision. We have to think about ourselves and our family. Yet, my wife still wants a relationship with her sister. She doesn't want to think that her sister only talks to her because she gives her money. And I truly wish this wasn't the case, and for Sil to contact her again. TLDR. We decided to slowly cut the allowance, but after a heated fight, we decided to completely cut it all at once. And we did. As to people's questions. 1. My wife doesn't think that her sister was the favorite child. But she was the younger child so it was a bit different, too. Sil never mentioned or complained about her husband being abusive towards her or anything. 3. For people who asked if I wanted to complete my education. I was embarrassed at first, but as I matured, I'm fine with myself and my job, and I don't mind being a janitor. I like the kids at school. If I wasn't a janitor, maybe I would have chosen to be a teacher. 4. To address the DMs, first no, I'm not using my wife for her money. My wife does pay more than I do but I do contribute as well. For example, while she paid for the wedding, I bought the rings. Crappy rings, but we love them. She pays bills, and I buy groceries. She bought me my car, and I bought her new shoes. And so on. Second no, I will not save up money, and then dump her. What kind of suggestion is that confused face making? Comments. Unjgur. You made the right decision. Your sister and her husband are taking you for granted, acting very entitled, and treating you really badly. I'm sorry but you're being used, and your wife will soon realize that the relationship with her sister was all about the money. You need the money for your own child and future, OP. The wife will soon realize that the relationship with her sister was all about the money. I think it's pretty clear to me. It has been almost a month now. But my wife is still trying to contact her. Melg 146. Respectfully, your wife DW needs to stop trying to contact Sil right now. At the moment, Sil has the upper hand by withholding contact. I bet that as soon as another month goes by, and she realizes your wife stopped reaching out, she'll get in touch. Or she never will, and that's her choice. But for now she can see that she's hurting DW, and there's power in that. OP. Yeah, I think so too. A comment suggested stopping contact for three months, and seeing how things go. I think she will contact us again, but I'm afraid my sill will go totally without contact when she sees us still standing by our decision. I wish this didn't happen, but we will be prepared for it. CSJC 2023. Her only value to her sister was 100% the money. Your wife should walk away and let the sister define any relationship that they might have in the future. If she doesn't try to re-engage, that just confirms money was at the root of the relationship. OP. It is really sad knowing that this relationship was based on money. That's not how siblings should act. I know that my wife will eventually lose hope and realize the sad truth. I hope my sister comes to her senses and stops this and for her husband to change. I'm not worried about my wife giving in. She's been confident in our decision. Though I'm worried about exhausting herself about this, I think this three-month hiatus is a good idea. I'm going to suggest that, though I know it will be a little tough. She used to call her sister three times a week to see how she's doing and all, but I think this will work. 
Three months is a good time to let them come to a decision about where they stand. Third story. OP's husband. Bonnie shamed her and called names, listening to his co-workers, then had a meltdown after she filed for divorce. I-30F do have very large boobs, a 38G, to be specific. I've been with my husband 33 years old for about 10 years, and while we have no children together, we are happy. Recently, he's been checking out my body more than before, and I don't mean in a let-me-take-you-to-bed kind of way. It's more of a what-could-you-be-hiding kind of way. Now I am by no means skinny. I am 5'5 five five and 180 pounds. Nowhere near as good as I could be. But I really don't have any motivation. And don't care as long as I don't look like I haven't showered in months and choose to be like that. Now I have a multitude of scars on my body, and my husband noticed. One is under my armpit, which I got from running up the stairs with my friend and scraping it against the corner of the railing in my old house. The second one is not even sure where it came from. It's thin, so I assume it came from my childhood cat, but it goes down my side about four inches and on my rib cage. My husband has been getting into more shows about spouses lying to their partners about things, which I do enjoy watching myself. My husband randomly came up to me and started feeling up on my boobs, which isn't out of the ordinary, but still random. I asked him what he was doing, and he said, how could you lie to me like that? I asked about what, and he said my boobs. I said my boobs were real. What are you talking about? He said no, they are not, and that I have two scars on my boobs that clearly show I had a boob job. I told him that's not how it works, and usually they cut under the boob for that. He said they cut on the side as well, and I'm sorry for not telling him. I told him I wasn't lying, and that he was being weird. I had an argument with them, and I left with our cats to my friend's house, the exact friend I'd gotten hurt with. I explained what happened to her, and she called my husband and yelled at him. His mother also yelled at him for that, but his dad is on his side. After I agreed to come back home, he said he'd forgive me if I just admitted that they were fake. I told him that they weren't, and that you'd seen me when I was skinny, and could tell it was because of my weight gain. He brought up the time I had to go to my home state and stay for six months, because of my grandmother, who sadly passed away. My family does eat a lot of fattening foods, and when I left for home, I was 125, and when I came back, I was almost 150. Those eating habits transferred over to my home life, and I never really got back into my healthy eating style. He continued to pester me about my boobs, and so I told him I wanted a divorce or separation at least. He backpedaled and begged me not to, but I made up my mind. He called me numerous times after I left for a week, crying and begging me to come home. I told him no, and that if he couldn't leave it alone, I wouldn't come back. He started throwing insulting names at me, to which I hung up. Now his friends and his best friend are calling me an arsey hole for wanting to divorce over a simple issue. So Ada. Ada has no consensus bot. The OP was NTA. Top comments. Spider 389. He's been with you for 10 years. Why is he now asking if they're fake? Lonely Octopus 24. His dad sided with him. Mother of Christ. The stupid apple doesn't fall far from the stupid tree. Mod Davis. A simple issue. First, he calls you a liar, then doubles down, refuses to listen to your friend, and demands you apologize. This guy isn't worthy of your boobs. NTA. Update. I just want to say thank you for all the support from the messages and the comments. But the number of people asking to see my boobs is pretty concerning, along with the two asking to date me or wanting to take me out. But again, thank you for the offer, and for clearing something up. When I posted this ID, I had already been with my friend for three days, so it hasn't been that long, and I decided to go back home to really talk it out since someone said someone may be saying something to him. I talked to him about it, and his answers constantly changed from no one making him think that he had seen something that said they were making implants feel more real, which I've never seen anything saying they were to finally telling me the truth, which was what his co-workers were telling him. I asked him how he could think that, knowing he'd seen my body change, and he said he didn't know. He showed me a picture of us. He showed his co-workers that I was wearing a waist trainer and a bodikin dress. While you could still tell, I had some weight in my stomach, but still a lot in my boobs. I rolled my eyes as I set the picture down and stared at him. He eventually told me that his co-workers were telling him so much that they were fake, and when he mentioned my scars, it just caused him to believe it more. I said, so you believe your co-workers who you've known for six months, and know how they act around women over your wife of ten years? He eventually broke down crying, which was pretty uncomfortable, but then said he'd do anything to make me forgive him. I asked him why he would still think that about me even after feeling them, and he said because he didn't want to admit he was wrong and have me hang it over his head. I will admit I have done that a few times, like when he bleached his whole load by mistake, 
because there were two white shirts in the load, and he thought adding bleach would be fine. And another time he was messing with the cats after they'd healed from being neutered, and were spraying everywhere not a fun six months and got sprayed in the face. I told him that I wanted him to find a new job and do couples therapy, like some of you had suggested. He agreed immediately and began drafting his two-week notice. We both make enough and have enough saved to go without jobs for at least a month and a half since we have separate finances and a joint account for bills. We both make over $100,000 a year, with me working in human resources and my husband working in medicine. So, when my husband had an office party for one of the boss's birthdays, I wanted to talk to the co-workers who told him what they thought. When I saw them, I was personally not that shocked. They were decently in shape men, but still not as good as they could have been with beautiful wives who'd clearly had work done nothing crazy, just filler and botox. While my husband was giving his notice to his boss, not the one whose birthday it was, I went to talk to them and their wives. Their wives were shocked at what their husbands had said about me and began to quietly chew into them about that, since I assume they were the reason the wives got some work done. I could be wrong though, but still. My husband and I enjoyed the rest of the party and went home. The next day, my husband was pestering me to go into work. I am able to work from home or in the building. So I agreed after some questioning and went in. When I came home, he was nowhere to be found. But the entire apartment was deep cleaned like I had been wanting to do. Lunch was made. And all the cat amenities like litter boxes, food and water bowls, and a cat stand had been deeply cleaned as well. After about 20 minutes of me looking around, my husband came back home. He was a little upset that he had come home earlier than he wanted since the carpet wasn't completely dry. He'd cleaned it with our rug cleaner, like I wanted. He had made my favorite food that my grandma had made since, after the funeral, I'd inherited her cookbook and some money. My husband then gave me a few of my favorite flowers, which are hibiscus flowers, and a small handwritten note. He used to do it all the time in college, and when I did an exchange program in Brazil for fun, which was a full apology saying how sorry he was and that he should have known to distance himself from his co-workers and should have stopped them from talking about me in a bad light. I smiled, thanked him for the flowers, and continued eating. After I finished, he cleaned the kitchen for me, took me upstairs, ran a bath for me, picked out some comfy clothes for me, and gave me a full-body massage without ending in SX. Later, after he took me out to dinner and paid for it all he always does, but it's still good to mention, when we'd gotten home, we did end up having SX, but it was better than usual. All focus was on me instead of the both of us. I didn't have to give heads. And after I was completely satisfied, the act was over even if he didn't finish. After that, he'd cleaned me up and gotten me something to drink. I asked him why his aftercare was different than usual. It was usually a kiss and cuddling. He then said that he wanted to do more in order for me to forgive him. He then gave me an even longer apology, saying that even after all of this, I don't have to forgive him. And he knows he was being stupid for not admitting he was wrong and not backing down. But he'd do anything to get me to not divorce him, even if it meant being a stay-at-home husband. I laughed since he was usually the one wanting to be the breadwinner and wanting me to be a stay-at-home wife, which is why I work from home for the most part, so I can still have my own money. I told him that I do forgive him, and as long as he finds another job, and we get therapy, it's fine, and I wouldn't divorce or do separation. He continuously thanked me and said he thought I would never forgive him. I said I thought I was being a little overly dramatic when I said divorce but that's fine. I didn't mention my post on what to do, and we were happy again. Our therapy session is scheduled in the next few days, and we are bringing the cats back home soon. Thank you again to everyone who gave me advice, and did say I was doing a little too much by wanting a divorce, and I hope you all are good. Top comments. Perthwita. I'm cynical and see that whole thing as love bombing. But I genuinely hope the future goes well for you, OP. J Shot Boxing. Awa, I'm glad he's taking accountability and admitting that he was in the wrong. The only thing I'm still thrown off about is the fact that he called you names and berated you when you mentioned a divorce. I really hope that doesn't become a habit and come into future arguments, because that can turn into verbal abuse. I'm glad you guys are doing okay though. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.